Hey guys, Dolphin Oracle here again this morning. I know it's been a little while, been a little busy, doing a little bit of this, a little bit of that, starting, you know, new careers and whatnot, so it's been a little crazy around here, around the Oracle household. At any rate, settling down, and I thought I'd get back on the wagon here with a quick video. A user in the MX forums had a great question this morning, and it started with, how do I add the unstable repo? Well, no, don't do it, because it will be bad. Don't do that. But what it actually turned out that, um, I'm going to butcher the name, but Michael Dubzak, okay, I don't know. I don't, I'm sorry, I don't know how to say your name, but MX user, um, uh, what he actually wanted to do was add Cubzilla to his system. It's a Cubzilla, if you don't know. It's a lightweight browser. We actually played around with it during MX14. Uh, it actually was originally the original default browser for MX14, but it just had too many issues. It's getting a lot better. But uh, he wanted the ID unstable repo so he could get a more current version of Cubzilla. So, okay. So, anyway, this led into a discussion of, hey, why don't you get the app image? Because they're more up to date. What is an app image? Well, you've heard of flat packs. Probably they're and snaps from Ubuntu world. They're like wrapped up packages, executables with with all the stuff in them that the app needs to run. An app image is kind of the same thing. It's a lot. It's they've been around a little bit longer. Um, and Cubzilla, the Cubzilla people directly make one. So I'm at Cubzilla.com and 2.1.2. Okay, great. So I'm gonna go to the download button. And you'll see it's going to offer you, okay, who, what do you want to run it on? Oh, they offer it for all kinds of things. So if you go on Debian, which is what you would use for MX, all it says is run app get install Cubzilla. Well, you're going to get an older version if you do that. Um, our version is newer. The MX version is newer than De Debian's, but it's still not as new as what's currently out there because there's some library conflicts um, with the current Debian stable, which is still Jesse, even though Stretch is in freeze. Eh, it's going to be a while, okay? So if you come over here to other Linux though, you're going to get app image that can be downloaded by clicking the link below. And it's a Cubzilla app image. It's 64-bit only. Sorry, 32-bit guys. It would be awesome for you to have this, but they didn't make it available. Maybe someday somebody will, but right now it's not. So you download this app image file. And I've already done this because it's a fairly good size file. Uh, well, I guess it's not so bad for a browser when you consider that all the libraries are in it. And what you get is this folder here, this file here. It's a Cupzilla 2.1.2 .app image. Okay, what do I do with that? Well, if you click on it, nothing's going to happen. It's going to ask you what you run it with. So you got to do a right click and hit properties. Over here to permissions, and you check this box. Allow this program to run. Run this file to run as a program. App images are executables. Uh, but when they download, they're not going to download with the executable bit set. So you got to click this little button here to do that. And then you can just run the thing. And that's it. It's the it's the it's the latest version of Cubzilla. Um you know, uh let's see here. Yeah, 2.1.2. Um uh, and it's running the Qt web engine 5.8 and all that stuff and it's all wrapped up in its own little executable file. Everything it needs to run. Now lots of places offer app images for their apps. Even the uh, the KDE project has started doing it with things like Caden Live and things like that. Uh, some app images are a little hit and miss because they still expect certain libraries and whatnot to be present on the host system. Ideally an app image will have everything and so hopefully one day those KDE guys, because I would love to have KDE, uh, Caden Live in an app image because um, that would be really cool. Uh, I wouldn't have to download all the KDE junk like all over my system I would just have the app image attached to it so at any rate that's how you download the app image and that's how you run it now you'll notice that it won't show up in the menu it's not under internet it's not here okay so how would you do about doing that there's a couple of different ways I'm going to show you one that'll work um, for so that the app image is accessible to all your users right now it's in my home folder but we want it accessible to all the users that might be on this computer so if you're in a multi-user household uh, that way you'll be able to get everybody can get to the file so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna put this in a uh, location called slash opt a slash opt is a kind of place for apps that are built kind of outside the regular file system you see our uh, Google Chrome installs in there uh, automatically our version of Firefox ESR installs in there. 
uh, the extended support release version of Firefox. So I'm going to create a folder in here. Uh, except I'm not going to be able to because this is actually a root accessible location. So I'm going to just open up a root Boonar. And I've already put my password in, that's why I didn't ask. And I'm going to create a new folder. I'm just called App Images. And I'm going to open that up. And then I'm going to drag the app image from. Whoops. I ran it. I'm going to drag the app image from my home folder to this folder. Now, that, that image is now available to everybody. All they got to do is navigate to that spot and run the file. Well, what if I want it in the menu? Okay, that's fine. Um, uh, let's see here. I'm going to go down here to... Uh, there's a couple of different ways to do that, but I, again, I want this accessible to everybody. <sighs> so what I'm going to do, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to create a launcher on the desktop, and I'm going to call it Cubzilla. And this is the app image version. And the command to run it, I'm just going to navigate to it. I could type it in, but I'm just going to navigate to it. So opt app image, Cupzilla app image. I'm going to give it an icon. Now, our current, my current icon set has a Cupzilla icon in it. You can choose a file individually if you like, but I happen to know there's already a Cupzilla icon. So I'm going to click that. And I'm done. Now it's going to put that on my home folder. I mean, on my on my desktop. But I don't want that on my desktop. I want that in um, a location where the menu will pick it up. So I'm going to go to slash user slash share slash applications. And you see, there's all kinds of other launchers in here. So this launcher file is actually just a text editor document. You don't you can't tell because of the way they do it, but you see now I got an open with leafpad. You see it gives you the name and the application and everything. You can call this thing whatever you want. And so that it doesn't interfere with any later Cupzilla that I might have, I'm going to rename whoops, I'm going to rename the file. Instead of Cupzilla Desktop, I'm going to call it Cupzilla App Image Desktop. You'll see it doesn't change. That's because when you display desktop desktop files, application, they're like shortcuts if you don't know. Um, it takes the, whatever the name of the application is. So you can see um, it's already, it's, 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 it's fine the way it is, but it'll have a different name. So it won't override any existing Cupzilla file, so you can have both. So I'm going to drag that in here. Again, this is still the root Thunar. I'm going to drag it into user share applications. And that should show up now on my menu, and it does, under other. Well, I don't want it under other. It's a web browser. I want it under internet, where it should be. Uh, okay, so no problem. We're going to do one more step. We're going to edit this file. And I can hit edit as root, but uh, it, I'm already running root in that, in that file manager. But we're going to add a category. Category. Categories equals network. Okay, yes, I know. It's internet. I don't know why these two items don't line up. They have they don't line up in any distribution for like a million years. But if you want it in the net uh, internet category, you slap it in network. So you save that, and that should update relatively quickly. And there it is. And it's gonna show up for all your users. Now there's some easier ways to do this if you don't care that it doesn't show up for all your users. You can do this in a special folder of your home folder and you don't have to do it through all the root crap uh, that I just did. But this 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 way puts it everywhere and you can actually delete this file. I don't need it anymore. Get it off my desktop. So now that it's in the menu, you can go in here and you can right click it. You can say add to panel if you want or do whatever it is you want to do with it. and your app runs. So that's a quick one on setting up launchers for multiple users, custom launchers for multiple users, and for introducing you to app images with Cubzilla. And thanks for the forum user, I, Michael uh, Bazak, or however I've butchered your name, I'm sorry, um, for the suggestion for this video. He didn't suggest a video, but he suggested the problem. For tips, tricks, how-tos, head over to mxlinux.org or throw up a post at forum.mxlinux.org. This is Dolphin Oracle signing off. Have a great day.